To see more tours and test drives, be sure to check out tinyhome.tours. So everybody, this is a very exciting video. We are test driving a marathon coach. This is Chris right over here. He's gonna be talking about the, the coach and tell you some different features, some different things going on with it. This is the biggest coach I've ever been in test driving, so this is pretty exciting for me. So thanks for taking us along today. You're welcome. So right now we're at the Marathon facility in Coburg, Oregon. There's an interstate right next door. We're gonna go on the interstate. So this, this coach right here, if it was to be sold today, what is the, the, the price of this? I think it's, I think the sticker on it is 2.1. It's a double slide. And then, you know, with the double slide, come directly from Prevo in Canada. We also have a quad slide that we do that is actually, uh, the slides are converted by a company in Dallas, and they're up in, in uh, Western Canada. And uh, those are, of course, a little bit more expensive. And those are more, uh, more for the NASCAR drivers, you know, when you're when you're driving down the bus or when you're driving down the interstate and you have um, you want to get up and get something out of the refrigerator and the four slides are kind of hard to walk through the middle of the bus to walk back there and get anything. And so double slides are more popular with the, the families. So when you get to a spot and you don't want to put the slides out, you can just you go right down the coach. Right. And right now, you know we're. We're, uh, I've got the generator on. The watts are, are big enough where you can run everything in this in this bus off just the generator. And I've got the generator going right now. I had no idea. I couldn't even hear it. Yeah, we have five five uh, air conditioners, and so that way we can travel in comfort in a nice 70 degrees climate control. If uh, if you're driving, you know, if we're just driving the bus somewhere, and the driver has their own um, individual setup up here, which comes with the bus from Prado. So, and every every motorhome that goes through that that facility is all Prado. Yes, but for the most part, probably in the last, well, let's see, 15, 15 years, 15 to 20 years, it's just been strictly uh, Prado. They also have a, a cruise control, an adaptive cruise control, so you can set the cruise and, and it'll it'll slow you down when you come up behind a truck or another car and it'll keep you at that speed uh, until you're ready to get past them. What's the what's the total length on this one? Do you happen to know? This is 45 feet. 45 feet. Yeah, they're all 45 feet. So if, if someone were to purchase this, would they need any type of certification to to drive it or? To... No, that's an interesting story. No, actually, um, as as we're sitting in there right now, it's considered a commercial vehicle, so I have to have a, a CDL to drive it. But because you work for the company. Because I work for the company. Okay. But if you were to purchase it right now, you could drive off the lot with a standard Class C license. On our test drive, we do a, we actually do a zero to fifty to see how fast it'll go to zero and fifty. And just so for you, speed bus is about takes about twenty seconds to get to fifty. You know, when you're traveling with about fifty thousand pounds, you're going to have to. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that beeping is actually, it says I'm too close to that truck in front of me. It's got a, a distance to work sensor on the front of it. So it can actually pick up when you're close to objects, close yeah. to different vehicles that aren't you? Yeah. I've never tried it, but I hear that it will automatically break if you're... Uh, <laughs> you've never been in that situation? No, I haven't <laughs> tried that yet. So you go through about 18 of these, like about 18 a year, yep. to produce from that facility. Yes. And are they pretty much all bought up right when they're they're, they're finished? Um, it's a mix of about well, in, in the past it's been about a 20 percent sold and an 80 percent uh, what we call designer choice, where the designer choice buses are. You no, know, we like to say that no marathon is alike. So you, each one is different, um, and those are sent off to different shows. Um, so probably about twenty percent are sold, eighty percent um, are what we consider for sale. So when when the bus arrives, is it like what what condition is the Prevo in when it first arrives at your facility? Uh, it's it's primer gray, um, and 
it pretty much has a steering wheel and no radio, just a steering wheel and an air conditioner. The rest of it is just an empty shell. Uh, of course, you have your engine and your suspension and all the mechanical aspects of it. Of course, it's dirty. Uh, the computer has got, you know, uh, computer on it. It's very high tech and, you know, more uh, way beyond me and my expertise as far as all of the, the technical aspects of it. But it's, it's uh, and then they do the window configuration for us. We order the shells. Um, uh, basically, they, you know, so the windows will be in different areas for us to allow for the floor plans to be put down. Uh, days are pretty much empty, so we do a lot of, uh, a lot of bracing for like the extra house batteries that we put in with us. You're going to have two banks, you're going to have what you consider the, the uh, chassis batteries, which run the chassis part of it, and then you also have the house batteries, which run the, the conversion part of it. So when, when you order it from Bravo, uh, do, are the slides already cut into it? Yes, the slides are already done and um, operational. And you know, when they, yeah, when they bring it in, the slides are already done. So everything I'm looking at here, everything on this interior, is all custom yes. made by Marathon. Yes, the whole dash area that you're looking at is done in-house through uh, our, we have our own in-house fiberglass area that actually we created the molds, designed the molds, and um, all of that is done in-house. Wow. We found that it's cheaper to build our own furniture than to buy it, plus it's better quality. So you just pressed the button there. Was that a uh, an engine assist braking? Yeah, uh, it's the retarder. So yeah, it's the uh, it's actually in the transmission. So um, when you let off the gas, it has different uh, strengths. So it'll like when you're going down a hill, or it just helps you brake without having to use the actual brake. And um, you have to turn it on every time you you turn the engine on. We're gonna go back through here. To, uh, if there's just some. Um, Kind of a back road into some little towns here in Coburg, north of, or little town of Oregon, north of Coburg. We're going to drive into a little town called Harrisburg. The other reason I wanted to take you up this road is because up here is uh, a couple of curves. And I'm driving, you know, this brand new bus, and these curves, we're going to go around them doing about 60. So you can kind of see. How well this corners. This, that's the most amazing part to me in driving these. Um, yeah, it's a very big vehicle, but um, they are drive so smooth that it's it's not very. Yeah. So I'm going to set the cruise on 60, 59. I've seen Dave do this at uh, 65. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm in trouble. <laughs> but still 65. That's crazy. Well, no, I'm sorry, 60, 59. That's insane.
I don't know if it's explained to me somehow they've got something in the center of it that senses the, the shift. And I don't know. I mean, it's one of those that you have to do a little bit of research to pray about it. Pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, I know these, just even the shell, like that bare shell that comes in, that it's just, you know, no paint, there's nothing on the interior. That's five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 piece of equipment. The, the whole shell? Yeah. 500000 Yeah. Yeah, they, they're, they run over 500000 for the shell. When you get up to a, a turn signal, it's got cameras on each side. So the turn signal, it'll, it'll act when I turn it left it'll kick on the turn signal for your left side so you can see down the side of your bus. This is always the turn that everybody uh, ends up losing their job because this, uh, <laughs> this tree is uh, not a very friendly tree in the uh, summer. You have to make sure you go way outside. <laughs> yeah, so I remember here in that that paint job is a for a three man crew it takes twenty six days three three weeks for for this paint job yeah for yeah for three man crew yeah yeah and then we do have um, what they call an auto level I was telling you about the company Ballad that does the, the four slides the quad slides for us well they also provide the auto level which basically at a touch of a bit button it automatically levels. Do you have to know the height of this? Um, yeah, I do. They're about 12 and a half feet. Oh, wow. A little over 12 feet. Yeah. They, they kind of vary. Um, the uh, H3 is taller. Did she scoot back a little bit? Yeah, she did, but I was... <laughs> My gas coach is 12 foot 9 inches, so this is probably shorter than mine. It's a little bit, yeah. Maybe. Wow. See, I've never seen that before. Motorcycle with a bow on the back. He must be like that guy from Walking Dead. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> It, it, that was literally what popped yeah. in my head. I didn't know if you watched the show. This is actually the, uh, we, we, when we get the shells, we take it on a road test. This is actually the route that we do um, for that first initial road test. And what, what are you looking for in that initial road test? Basically how the bus drives, um, making sure that the retarder is working properly. The, the, it's, it's an initial check-in. Um, the, the uh, gauges, we check all the gauges, make sure the gauges are running normal. Uh, the computer has um, self tests on it where it'll, it'll test the lights and all of that, so we go through and test everything there. Run it a little bit, we also have to take it to the DMV because we have to do a, they call a, a bin check where it requires it to, you know, that they, they check the bin against the paperwork. And then when we're done with the production process, we'll, we'll take it on probably about a three and a half to four hour road trip. Basically looking for any noise. It takes about that long for kind of everything to relax a little bit. And so that way we can center in on it. Because there's nothing worse than when you drive one of these you have an annoying buzz or something. Mm -hmm. Try that for you know, eight hours on the road. Yeah, it definitely doesn't make any sense to put all that work and effort into something and then you try and get on the road and something was was uh, wrong with the factory. Right, exactly. So, yeah, so we do that. And, uh, but this is the little route that we put it on, so it's got some turns and it's got some... So, you know, we can try it out the features as far as the turning radius. Our empty shell turns a lot better than a bigger shell. Just a lot lighter. Yeah, it's lighter. So I did notice a lot of the older uh, Prevos in the, in the parking lot. Are you seeing this? I know the chassis changed over a year, but it's Prevo over the years. Do they do they hold up to the million miles? Or they do they do pretty well? They do. Um, the funny thing is, you'll you'll notice that these when they come in as a, a, you know as a trade in. 
they won't have more than 100,000 miles on the, on the body because a lot of people are seasonal travelers. Um, but, you know, you, you can, I'm sure you can walk over there into the service area and find a bus that was from the early 90s and it looks like it's in great shape. I like to go over there once in a while and look at some of the, the work that we used to do. It's like, Man, I remember doing that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure what happens a lot of times, since the, the the bus itself is so solid, do you have people come in just to get the interior retrofitted to a newer look? Oh, okay. yeah. Does that happen a lot? Yeah, service does a lot of remodels. In fact, you know, when the, we, we, when there was that big slowdown, um, that's what a lot of, because people, you know, weren't really wanting to spend the money for a new bus, they were, they were spending money on the remodel. Service was a big part of us allowing to continue through that time was uh, doing remodels. Wood flooring was, was very popular. A lot of people were converting to wood flooring. So when you first started, it was pretty much all carpet and it went to wood flooring now? Yep. Yeah, wood flooring and tile is pretty much the norm now. Occasionally we'll do a, a bedroom will be carpeted, but for the most part, tile and wood flooring. Or this one, I think, has got wood flooring. Well, you know, the, the, the driving part of it, you know, speaks for itself. It, it pretty much, it's so smooth. Look, I don't even know how to... I was amazed the first time I ever drove one. Exactly. And it's so quiet because, like I said, the engine's so far back. I mean, I, coming into this, I obviously had a good idea it was going to be really smooth, really quiet, but it, I, I didn't expect it to be to this this level. Yeah. yeah. Especially being able to take a turn that fast, that is one thing, like, I definitely didn't think I'd be able to do that, just because in your head you see or think of something this big, it makes sense, if enough work, enough effort to make it quiet, uh, you know, or to make it smooth, that can be done. But to be able to have all that plus be able to handle like that, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah. They they are impressive vehicles. They're very well very well made. We have a good relationship with Rainbow. They uh, you know support us in, in any issues that we might have. They work with us real well to uh, you know they will have just the simple aspect of, you know, when most companies will have foam in the ceiling. But we take all that foam out because we want to put our own, we have our own system. And just the simple aspect of not putting that foam in there is, is you know, they'll, they'll go and help us. They go through a lot to convert these converters, put out a, a, a good vehicle. And, and the truth is, uh, you know, their main, their main income or their main sales are the, the travelers, you know, that you see going down you know, uh, the great towns and all of those. Um, but they do, they do have a, a niche in this conversion market where um, they're just top of the top of the line. They really are. Everything on here has a backup to a backup to a backup, <laughs> which is, you know, all of the buttons have a manual backup. But um, if you are if you are stranded somewhere and you try to turn over your your engine and it, it doesn't turn over, so your chassis batteries are dead, we have over here a button that says jump start, which will will kick over to your house batteries and will literally um, um, allow you to use your house batteries to start your engine. And then for some reason, if those are dead. We have a third backup. There's one battery that starts the generator, and it's a standalone battery. And you can go down, and it's and it's continually on a charger through a solar shield up on the roof. <laughs> and that, if if you have two banks that are dead, you can go to that third battery and it starts your engine. I I just happened to take a peek at that generator. That is a pretty hefty generator. I'm guessing it's a diesel because it had a turbo on it. it. Yes, it is. It's a diesel and it, it's it's wired right up to the, it runs off the, the tanks on the, on the bus. Yeah, I had no idea that there were that many people working there until we walked around the facility. Do you have to know an estimate on how many people 
I think, at that facility? I think we have, I know we have a neighborhood of about 75 in production. And then, you know, you've got your support crew, so I'm going to say a little over 200 here. And then, wow. of course, we've got Florida and Texas, which are service facilities. They probably have about 20 each there. So they're they're just service, they don't manufacture? Right. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're the only manufacturer. While we're in the facility, I kept hearing people refer to coaches in numbers. Mm -hmm. So how, how does that system work? Is it incremental to yep. every coach? Yep. Every, uh, so this coach that we're in right now is 1244. So that's the, the 1,244 coach that Marathon's ever built. Oh, wow. Minus, I, I should take that back. Minus, we did not build 666. <laughs> really? Seriously. <laughs> so minus one. Say somebody's interested in uh, in purchasing one of these. Is it more of a thing where this coach was designed by a by a certain person, or is it more along the line somebody comes into your facility, they pick out what they want, and then it's built for them, or is it just it's all conditional? It's kind of the the third. It's kind of all conditional. I mean, we have a mix. We we've had. Um, Oh, it was Zach Brown, Zach Brown, you know, Zach Brown came in and he has a very highly customized bus. You know, I mean, it's something that we've never done before. Another one um, was Tom Cruise, who did his many years ago. And, and so those were designed pretty much by them, working with our designers. But then we also have uh, like this one, which was we design or our designers did all of the the, the designing and the color matching and everything. But it sometimes will appeal to people when they like the color. So uh, there seem to be different trends in the uh, in the market as far as wood floors. Um, one of the things right now that seems to be a popular trend is the. Uh, um, you'll notice that there are the, there'll be different two different types of colors of laminate. They all yeah. be all one color of the two different types. So you've you've seen every trend since early nineties. Yes. We used Come to do all wood go. coaches back then. Really? Yeah. Koa was a big deal. Koa wood which uh you know the Hawaiian artwork. You can only be bought in Hawaii. Um, very hard to come by now. But uh, we did a lot of uh, koa coaches, and then you know laminate became popular. So then everything started to be laminated. And occasionally we do a wood coach, but you know the, the laminate is just gives such a wide range of designs. Well, thank you for your, your time today. This was awesome. This was so, so cool. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hope well, everybody, hope you enjoyed the uh, the test drive. It was definitely the the nicest coach I've ever ridden in. <laughs> thanks, thanks for your time, Chris. Sure.